Who's a business type person or business process? Cool. Well, that's not too bad. As worried you're all going to be techies and all the other stuff. Anyway. Okay. Um, so I was actually going to give this talk a year ago. Um, I was building a product on top of a, an API, which is essentially it's a service. It's you know a company opens up their data, opens up their services. You can request information from them, put it into a nice interface, much simpler interface usually usually than Google and so on. Create a nice product and sell it. Do something that the original company isn't doing. A little bit of innovation and so on, but it didn't work. Um, and there are certain things about using other people's APIs, other people's services that you have to be careful of. So I'll just tell you a little bit about what I was doing last year. So who knows about the um, Moo cards? Moo.com, have you seen them? They make a um, very small, very trendy, <coughs> funky little business cards like this. And essentially, their service is you go to the website, you put in your, you know, your name, your address, email, so on, and then you pick out some pictures from Flickr or you upload your own design, create some massive PDF. You never see this, this all happens in the background. Print it out, they cut it up, put it in a little box, deliver it anywhere in the world. You give them 15 euros, nice little business. Lots of people are using it. Um, what they actually did was they created an API. So they opened up their printers to the rest of the world to create other businesses on. So we could create websites, create products and so on, various different software, um, and be able to print via them. So I was thinking, this is a nice idea. Um, essentially, they have the infrastructure, they're gonna take the payments, they're gonna do all the delivery, They Basically, they've put all the money up front. So we can build a product on top of this and um, make some money as well. So I thought, okay, what, what would people want to print? Um, people go on Twitter, they favorite things. They go on Facebook and so on, they favorite things. They go on Flickr and they favorite things. So I thought, all I need to do, create a website, put a little box on the website. You put your information in, hit the button, off it goes, creates the massive PDF, move print it out, do the delivery, take the money, I get a little share of the money. So I thought, great. This was around about September. By the time I've done this, it'll be Christmas, lots of people will be creating your know, little Twitter cards, that kind of thing, you know, buying them for friends. I'll have made a lot of money, and then the following Christmas, I'll be a millionaire, the fashion will have passed, and that'll be okay. Though. I'll have made my money, I'll have got out. The reason I didn't give the presentation was because two weeks before, they then sent me an email saying, actually, we're going to withdraw the API. Boom. The entire service was withdrawn, so the whole business idea disappeared. And that's what you have to be careful of when using other people's APIs. So essentially, um, it's an interface onto other people's businesses. You use them every day. Some of you may have used Google Maps to come here. You may have typed in the directions from the address here to your own home. It would have given you a route. Essentially, that's using uh, the Google Maps and Directions API. Now, we can build products on top of that as well. If you have a, a contact page on your website, you, your developers, they may put in the coordinates of, of your company. That'll pull in a map. People can move the map around, zoom in and out, and so on. So that's just a very simple example of you know, how you can integrate someone else's service into your own website. It's not a product as such, but it's very common. And Google Maps is actually the most commonly used API. Twitter as well, there's a massive ecosystem of Twitter applications around. Some people, they do it for free, they don't make money, but then there are other companies like uh, Seismic, like TweetDeck and so on, who are making an awful lot of money from 
either selling uh, clients or doing the data mining on all <coughs> the, the information that's passing through the, the products that they create. This was taken last year. When I went to look at the same page yesterday, there was 100 APIs. And this is just the Google stuff. So if you look at some of these, you've got analytics, <coughs> finance, calendar, contacts, and spreadsheet. Now out of those, you can pull together a dashboard for a company. You can make a basic CRM. You don't have to install any software in the company. You just pull it all together. I don't think Google's going to go away. I don't think Google are going to pull their APIs. I certainly hope not. Um, so you know, you're, you're on a fairly sound basis there. Um, but rather than build a complex CRM, there, there are opportunities there to you know, build something quite simple for um, you know, mid-range mid customers. And you can do it very, very quickly as well. Um, because you're relying on other people's infrastructure, and Google's is good. Uh, it's not just Google, though, of course. I've already mentioned uh, Twitter and TweetDeck. So they have a, a whole range of products that they built on the Twitter API, which, to be honest, isn't exactly the most robust, but um, it's getting better. New, oops, New York Times, um, they've also opened up their, their data. Um, in this instance, they're actually using it themselves. So they have created a desktop version of the, the New York Times, which is free, but then if you want access to certain types of content, then you have to, to pay for a subscription. So basically, they're extending the reach. And also, um, all of the links will then continue back to, to the actual site, where they're getting more views on the site, they're increasing their advertising revenue, and so on. <coughs> And that generally, just uh, to ask, does anyone know of any other APIs that are out there? Yahoo? Kind of thing. No? Okay. Um, governments in this as well. It's not to say you can't make money out of it, but um, a large businesses have been doing this for about 10 years now. Government is, there's now a big movement, certainly in the States. The UK are opening up. Um, their, their data as well. So there are opportunities to create products that will analyze public data and um, you can do consultancy <coughs> off the back of that as well. So the real opportunities as, as far as I see them are <coughs> to make simple products. There's a real movement towards um, small applications which do one thing and which do it very well. Um, so people are opening up very, very large sets of data, like Google, Ana Google Analytics, that kind of thing. Um, and generally, for, for most businesses, it's too complex. It requires costly consultants to, to analyze the data properly. Um, but you know, we can actually create very simple products that give a, a good overview of the, the basic information that you need. Um, the other opportunities are in integrating data from Google, Yahoo, um, Reuters financial information, that kind of thing, into existing intranets, CRMs, products that, that you're maybe already building or using, um, so that there's not a massive change for the organizations there. They feel much more comfortable integrating something into an existing product that they use rather than replacing something entirely. Um, and then internationalization, not really something I need to talk about. In Belgium, you understand the context of that quite well. But there are, there are certainly um, new markets. So for example, I doubt um, Yahoo will ever create an Icelandic interface for, uh, for Flickr. Um, but if someone was to create something simple, then you know, they, may, they may get some traction there. Um, by being involved with um, different APIs such as Google and Reuters, you, you can actually get some, uh, some, some kickback in terms of a benefit because you can create a very simple product, it can be branded with Reuters, and um, it you know, makes your product look good. So, in terms of less is more, the, the first point that I made, this is 
Google Analytics. Now, to me, I look at this and actually, you know, this is what I like doing. I, I like complex products, I like anal analyzing data and so on. So to me, I don't, I don't mind this. But for your average business owner, um, it's way too complex. There's too much going on, the menus down the side, so many options. And you know, this has just shown us a, a general overview. Now, because there is an API onto Google Analytics, um, a Belgian guy actually created this very simple widget. It sits on your desktop, pulls in the basic overview data that you need. Um, and this one's actually free, but there are some other, uh, there are some other commercial products as well. So basically, he's taken a very complex data set and put it into a very basic product. In terms of the um, integration opportunities, again, you don't have to take whole data sets, just take something very, very simple. Just take the, the key information from, uh, from Google Analytics or Google Financials and so on uh, that your company's interested in and in integrate that, that simple piece. Um, MailChimp, which is a it's an email subscription service, a bulk email service. Um, they have managed to integrate with Twitter and Facebook, and what they do is because they have your uh, subscribers' email addresses, they can go to Twitter, they can go to Facebook, and they can pull in the profile photos of all of the subscribers that are in your mailing list. And MailChimp customers really like this because basically, as, as they're looking through their list, as they're segmenting their list and so on, they actually get to see what people look like, provided they've used you know, a, a, a reasonably accurate profile photo. Um, so by using a, a, a free API, MailChimp have in, improved their own, their own product. And apparently customers really, really like it because they, people sign up anonym, anonymously, Nowadays also, you're trying to take the minimum amount of information, just a basic email address, to make sure you get as many people signing up as possible. And now you can actually see their, get to see their face, which helps a lot. <coughs> this company is called Flowtime. Um, they have gone a step further than that. So we see down here, Netflix, the movie company, Twitter, LinkedIn, New York Times, Facebook, this one is Pandora, music service, Amazon, and Flickr. And what they do is they take a company's mailing list and they go to all of these services, pull in all the information they can find about the people, gender, uh, age, they infer stuff from what films you rent in, on Netflix, um, they look at the type of things you're talking about on Facebook, <coughs> They, they take accurate data, and then they also have algorithms to, uh, again, infer other information about you. So they build up a very, very uh, detailed profile of your customers. Um, this has always been done to a certain extent in retail, but it's now very, very easy to do. It's, um, the costs have almost been eliminated with services like this. So, um, again, we're in Belgium, you, you guys understand about localization and internationalization. Um, so, once you've managed to make a product, a, a simple product, for example, that um, uh, looks at analytics or looks at Google financials and so on, uh, where can you sell it? So, there's an entire marketplace um, from Google which is particularly aimed at the Google Apps ecosystem. Um, of course, there's Apple uh, App Store and Android App Store. And there's now a move towards selling simple apps on actual desktops as well. So the next version of um, Apple is going to have an App Store built in. So pe people are moving away from the choice of looking for software, downloading it, buying it, installing it, to actually just you know, having the choices there in front of them, you click on it and it's installed for you. I get, I mean, you're paying. Um, Amazon are going to be opening an Android store, as are, and there's the, the new Chrome Web Store as well. So there are now lots and lots and lots of channels 
for these uh, new products built on APIs. Um, that's technical. So, if you want to use an API, do you have to pay for it? Well, not all the time. The majority of them are actually free. Generally, what they do is you'll have free access up to a certain limit. So, you'll be able to um, ask for maybe 50,000 queries on a service uh, each day. Um, once you get to the enterprise level, then you're going to go beyond that. So they'll, they'll generally charge you for that, so that this is how the, the providers are actually making the money. But you'll get a better level of service as well. Um, what do they get from it? Well, you s generally have to sign up, not so much for Google, but you generally have to sign up to actually use the API. So Reuters, for example, um, so essentially they're building a, a new customer base. Um, with the case of the New York Times, then they're getting their monetized content into into new areas, and also they have to they have to basically be part of this um, conversations where it's linked up with um, social websites like Facebook and so on. So um, they know that they have they have to get their content in there. Um, collaboration. So um, for example, Reuters have an API which you can fire some text at and then it will identify names of people, names of events, brands, those kinds of things and it, and it extracts it and, it and it returns that information to you. So the more that is used, the better it gets. It's like Google Translate, you know, the more we use it, the better it, it gets, theoretically. Um, dominance, so if you want to use any Reuters APIs, you have to use their branding. As I personally, I see that as a good thing. So make sure that they're make sure that they're um, visible. And then there are some monopoly issues around the fact that Google harvest the data, Google provide the data to you, Google organize the data. Um, if they also start to create all the products that analyze the data as well, then they they've really covered off all the angles and they have some monopoly issues there. So if they open up their data sets and allow for there to be um, a whole ecosystem of products around it, then at least at least it's, um, there are other players in the market. Um, and then of course there's the, the fact that uh, the API providers work on a, a freemium model a lot of the time. So if you want a robust product um, you know, with a service level agreement, and to go up to a, a certain number of queries, then you have to pay. So, um, what are the risks? Well, from my story at the beginning, where I was planning to build a, a, a product on uh, Moo.com's API, and then they, they pulled it at 15 days notice, um, essentially <coughs> you're utterly dependent on someone else's service. No, I mean, of course, it, this exists in the real world. If you're selling someone else's product, they can go out of business, you lose your product. But um, you tend to have more product lines. When you're working with APIs, you tend to focus on one or two. Generally, at the, the lower level, you're not going to get a service level agreement. And we see this a lot in, in Twitter. So Twitter will just go down. Um, if Twitter goes down, so do all the, so do all the clients. Luckily, Twitter isn't actually important or mission critical to, to our lives, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, generally, it's not your data either. So if you, for example, if you're using someone's authentication service, so uh, you can uh, use Yahoo or Google to, to log, log people on, and there are certain benefits to that, but also you're not really getting to, to you, uh, your customer data. So if the value in your business is in your customer data, then it's not necessarily an option for you. Um, you're also heavily reliant on the fact that uh, Google is going to introduce new features, Yahoo is going to introduce new features, whoever the provider is. Um, so you kind of have to move forward at their, their pace of development. And because they're large enterprises, that won't necessarily be that fast. Um, also, at the beginning, I mentioned you can 
take someone's data and do something that they're not doing with it. You can have a completely different idea, do something innovative. Eventually, they will probably get to that point and introduce that feature as well. So you have to keep moving forward. You have to keep innovating as well, or have, have some other differentiator. Um, then you have to ask yourself, if the company disappears, if the API disappears, do you still have a business? And in most cases, that's not the case. So if you are thinking of, um, if you are a business person and you're thinking about creating some new software products and you're not necessarily technical, this is the place to go. Programmable web lists all of the publicly available APIs and there are thousands of them. Nice thing, it, it categorizes them. So identify your area of experience, um, find the category, and you'll see all of the APIs, whether they're um, publicly available, whether they're uh, commercial, and also other products that use them as well. Um, they, they call them mashups, but essentially they're, they're products. So you'll get to see who else is doing other things in the field and get an idea around how you can actually use other people's data to create. I keep on saying simple products because I believe that's actually uh, the best way to use APIs. People that, that create these massively scalable infrastructures aren't necessarily good at, at creating um, front-end products, so you know, the smaller guys can uh, create decent products on these large data sets. Um, this first one, that was taken, uh, that was a, a shot taken a year ago. So as you can see, Google Maps is the, the most uh, frequently used. But Facebook aren't in there at all. Um, but then this is one that I took just the other day, three days ago. Um, it, it's only looking at the past 14 days of usage. But Luke, who's there on like Facebook, right at the top, I haven't a clue who Troco are, um, Twitter, uh, Flickr, YouTube, and Last FM. So it's getting much. The, it's all the social interfaces, uh, social media interfaces. So um, if you are thinking of building a product on top of uh, an API, then social is certainly the way to go. Uh, again, this, this is for the technical people. Um, you can go beyond the standard limits, you just have to register. So if there's anyone who is currently using Google APIs, then you might not know about this, it's fairly fairly recent. It just lets you go uh, above the, the publicly set limits. And that's it. So if you have got um, any ideas for products that you'd, uh, that you'd like to discuss, then come and see me. Yes. One thing, uh, just to differentiate a little bit, because you're telling about little applications, mm. uh, a lot of APIs, that means a lot of developers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of crap out there. Yeah. How, we're not building crap, I know, but how can we, uh, if we're not building crap, differentiate ourselves in this market? And second, if we build something that beautiful, because it's all public APIs, somebody can copy us very, very quickly. Yeah, but okay. Any, anything be, can be copied if you're on if you're dealing with software on the web now. Ev everything can be copied, and you have to deal with that. And that's why you you, you have to um, keep I, in 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 my opinion, you have to keep simplifying and uh, differentiate yourself on the basis of service. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be um, <coughs> a customer service, um, but service in in terms of training, in terms of creating a, a learning system uh, around, the, around the product as well. It gives, it gives additional insight and additional value. So for example, I'm creating an analytics product, um, but it's not aimed at tech use, you know? so it, it's, it's aimed at um, small business people who are in e-commerce. So I can also create um, uh, blog materials around other issues that e-commerce people face. So payment system, recurring payment, that kind of thing, where to get the best deal. Um, for me, so it's, it's lateral, yeah. Um, and also many many products can exist within the, the same space because uh, the, there's inertia and also there's just the fact that the, the, the majority of people um, who, who go out and buy products aren't at, 
majority of people who are buying products aren't actually um, spending that much time researching in the store. Not not for the, the simple twenty five bucks a month kind of product. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 discuss that offline. Yeah. I have a question about the, the marketplaces. Yeah. yeah. I know the Mac marketplace is very dependent on if it's allowed or not by Mac yeah. itself. But on the Google marketplace, is there a, how is the, you, you sell your product there and it's, um, is yeah, the entire profit yours or is, is it a share model with Google? Yeah. Um, Google will tell you it's free. Yes, yeah, so you have you have a registration fee. This this applies for the Android App Store as well. So you, you have an initial registration fee, um, and then they, they say it, it, it's free because basically they want the ecosystem to grow. Um, uh, with, with an Android app, let's say you're selling it at three euro, which is an an, an average price for an, for an Android app. Um, what they don't tell you is the charge goes through uh, Google Checkout and they take 95 cents. So in actual fact, it's the same as the Apple Store. There's a, there's a 30, 35% margin, there, which is what you have with the, the Google, with the Apple App Store. So Basically, the same thing, but in another package. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> spiced up differently. But yeah, Go Google um, takes upfront license fees largely because they want to avoid too much crap going in there. Um, so I mean, certainly with the Android marketplace, it was free initially, then they started to charge five euros and so on, but um, and it's, it's more expensive. Now. I think it's, is it 50 or 95? It's, it's gone up. Basically, they're using uh, an initial barrier of registration to try and filter out some of the crap. But yeah, the market the the marketplace for apps is um, is a good place to be uh, because you can create stuff that can plug into other Google Apps applications as well. Okay, right, Leo says we have to go.